All right, once again, we've got potato quality audio. Sorry about that. Uh, still working on the studio solution. But we need to get these videos up, so let's go. Let's talk about points and distributions. What you need to know here is how to solve problems like this one or like this one. So, given some information a, for a normal distribution or something that's like a normal distribution, being able to figure out what the areas are um, from a dividing point in that distribution on up or on down the scale. Or given what the percentage of area is below a certain dividing point or above a certain dividing point, being able to figure out what the dividing point itself is. So what the person's raw score was, for instance. So moving on, this is your main uh, learning objective here, understanding what a z-score is. Z-scores are a little dry because generally we want them as a stepping stone to understanding some stuff about normal distributions. So I'll try and make some examples where they seem a little bit relevant, but ultimately this is not we ultimately this is not why we want the z-scores. We want them because they're useful in a longer term sense. Z-scores, uh, just the mechanics of them, they're just a scaling solution. They're just uh, measuring off in a certain number of steps in something. So let's say you've got a football situation. In football, you're trying to get a certain number of first downs. So how many first downs, if it's just a perfect march to victory on a ground game, how many first downs would you need from the 30-yard line to get to the goal line here, over to the right? One. So each first down... Five, six, seven. Each first down is 10 yards. So we can think of the raw scores as being these number of actual yards, but the number of first downs, the number of steps you take of 10 yards each, that's like Z scores will work in distribution. In a distribution, you're always measuring with Z scores when you use them. You're measuring from the mean, either up or down, and you're measuring how many steps it takes to get from the mean to this place that you're that you're interested in. And the size of the steps isn't first downs, it's uh, standard deviations. And the standard deviation can be bigger or smaller. So in this case, if there was a larger standard deviation, it's sort of like if you had um, a larger first down. So if first downs were 15 yards, then how many steps are there from the 30 to, 30 to goal? One, four, and then that last step isn't quite an entire first down. It's 10 yards, not uh, not 15, right? So it's four and two thirds. You can have partial values here, no problem. Or you can imagine very small first downs. Let's say first downs are just five yards. In that case, there's a lot of them. You need 14 first downs. This is a crazy game. You're never gonna win this game. Nobody's ever gonna get a touchdown. Have a running game or a, or a passing game or something like that. You can also think of z-scores as being sort of like a Cartesian coordinate system, measuring plus and minus. Because the first downs were missing this issue of plus and minus. Uh, you can have a positive or negative deviation from the mean. Z-scores are based on the concept of a deviation. Just like when you calculate a standard deviation, you use a deviation as the base of how you calculate z-scores. It's just a way of navigating inside your distribution and we're just kind of learning this system of navigation. So you can think of it as measuring from some central point and you either go up or down. So here's an overhead shot of Manhattan. With, and I left a little Google hand in there. Uh, overhead shot of Manhattan. Let's say if you start at the 50th Street Metro Station here, you can describe going up or down 8th Avenue. Let's ignore all the other avenues because these scores are just on one number line. Going up or down 8th Avenue as... Um, positive and negative values away from uh, uh, that metro station. So if you're starting from the metro station, you could describe getting to West 53rd Street and 8th. You could describe that as being like um, it's going two blocks north, right? Oh, sorry, three blocks north. So plus three. If you went to 54th, then that would be plus four. If you went to 48th, you're going south, and we could say that's negative, minus 2. West 46th is minus 4, so that's 4 blocks south. 1 block north is plus 1. So you seeing how this works? This is a really, this is something you do all the time. 
So going back to the data, each observation or any point that corresponds to anything that could exist on the x-axis, so a mean, for instance, isn't uh, usually an actual observation. It's sort of an abstract idea, but it's a point on the x-axis. So each observation on the x-axis or any point on the x-axis can be located with two pieces of information. The number of standard deviations it is away from the mean, and then the direction from the mean that it is. So with those two pieces of information, just like navigating from the metro station, okay, three blocks, three blocks which, which direction? Oh, south. All right, well, I know exactly how to get there. You can do that with z-scores too. Z-scores help you locate things. Now, z-scores can be used with any distribution. However, we especially like them with normal distributions because they gain an extra somewhat magical property. Not magical, it's mathematical. So let, let's just do this example here. You can pause as you go along and see if you have figured this out correctly and worked out the answers. Let's say this distribution has a mean of 6 and a standard deviation of 2. Now, z-scores work whether you've got a population or a sample. I haven't said whether the, which one this is, a population or sample. Um, I calculated the standard deviation using one of those formulas, but I can't remember which. And it kind of doesn't matter. If somebody gives you the mean and gives you the standard deviation. Now you've got what you need to know to calculate some z-scores. So here's the mean, 6. And the z-score is just a step of 2. So 2-hour two step, 2-hour two step. Two hours, two hours. The standard deviation is two hours. And so you measure from the mean up or down. So this little question mark right here, what's its z-score? That's a negative one. What about this one here at eight? A person who studies eight hours, what's that person's z-score within this particular distribution? That's plus one. Now negative one and plus one are equally unusual or predictable. The farther you get away from the mean, the more unusual or unpredicted or kind of notable your value is. And so you can use that to determine whether there are unusual uh, observations or whether one observation is more unusual than another one. So what about this person who studied nine hours? There were five people who studied nine hours. This is one of them. 1.5. So one step from the mean is two numbers on the number line, meaning two hours increase or decrease. That's one z-score step. That's one standard deviation increase or decrease. In this case, you increase one standard deviation to eight, another half a standard deviation to nine, so 1.5. An important point to remember, the mean always have a z, has a z-score of zero. There you go, three is negative 1.5. And apparently I have lots of examples on this slide. Now, Anytime we see a situation like this, we can imagine two parallel streams of numbers. We've got x, which is raw scores. They're all the possible values of the raw scores of the data you're actually collecting. All the possible hours of values in this case of the different hours that the students might study per day. And then you've got the z of x. So z sub x means the z score of each x. So 2 in raw scores equals negative 2 in z scores. 3 is negative 5. 4 is negative 1. 5 is negative 1 half. 6 is 0, etc. Each score and every possible score has a potential z score associated with it. So we can have two scales just paired up with each other. <coughs> this is similar to currency. So you go to Canada and you say, it costs 32.50. What does it cost in American? Or Fahrenheit and Celsius. It's a, you know 3 degrees Fahrenheit. What is that, that in Celsius? <coughs> Excuse me. So we're all done with this uh, this lecture. We'll move on to more next time.